Hey, it's Mars, and this is Let's Make a Dungeon Crawler Part 13. In this video, we'll be transitioning between scenes using doors. I drew a simple project in MS Paint, so let's take a look. Let's say we're in our main menu scene and we click on the Play Game button. It's going to take us to Town, and we will want to be standing. let's say here but if we enter town through a waypoint town portal exit a house enter the town from a dungeon to the east or a forest to the west now there's six different places that we'll want to be standing when our scene starts so to remedy this i'll be using a global string variable and we'll simply call it destination and then on start for our town scene we'll say if new game equals true which is only true the first time we ever enter town we'll spawn here else if our destination is from dungeon we can spawn here else if destination equals from house we can spawn here and so on. So let's do that now. In our scenes blocks here, we have if new game equals true, let's load our UI. And we also want to spawn the player. That's a character, spawn player. And now we need a destination for the spawn, a physical location in the scene. So I will go to Tools, Play Game, Show Toolbar. And I'll dock this next to my hierarchy. In the bottom button here, we can use a location marker. And this is just an empty game object, but we can see which direction it's facing. So I'll face it towards town. And I'll call this new game spawn. And let's also put one outside the house. I'll copy and paste, then move this one up towards the house and I'll rotate it so that the forward, the positive Z, or blue arrow, is facing outwards, like I just stepped outside. And I'll name this one Outside House. Now since we'll be spawning our player into the scene, he needs to not be in the scene's hierarchy. So I can delete him since he's a prefab or I can use Alt-Shift-A to disable him. And also the camera. So I'm going to take a look at my player's top-down camera component, and you'll see it has a target camera. I'll delete it out of there. So when the player enters the scene, this component grabs a camera from the hierarchy that has the tag main camera. And that's all right. I'll simply put a camera with the tag main camera into each scene. Then when the player enters, it grabs the camera and uses it for its top-down camera component. To make it easier, I've applied a few effects to my camera, saved it as a prefab, and I'll simply drop the prefab from my project window into each scene. Now I can turn my player off. And now we need our blocks to say where which one of these positions we should be standing at. So if new game equals true, which we set up in a previous video, this is the first time we've ever entered town, and we'll spawn player at the game object new game spawn. And I can drag drag that straight from the hierarchy into the ply blocks. Now let's add an else from flow, else, else this is not the first time we've ever entered town. Now let's check the destination global string. If a equals b, and that's our variable, global variable, destination, equals, let's call this, outside house. So that's a common string. 
outside house. Then we'll spawn the player at the game object outside house. So that takes care of both of our spawn points for this scene. Now we'll need to set outside house when we're leaving the interior of this building. I'll open that scene. And I'll add ply blocks to a game object in the scene. So let's turn this game object into an interactable door. I will add a box collider. I will add a ply game objects interact object and a ply blocks component. Then we can say RPG object on interact and we want to set our global destination to outside house. Now we load the level, flow, load level, town, and we need a spawn position. So in a game object in my scene, I've added ply blocks too. We'll need to tell the player to spawn and where to spawn. So I'll add a location marker facing inwards. And the ply blocks can say on start character spawn player at marker one. This is I'll rename this entrance so that's taking care of this scene let's finish up the town scene and we'll turn this into a door I'll add a box collider a ply game object interact object and ply blocks and once again RPG object on interact. We could set the global destination so we know where to spawn inside the house, but there's only one spawn point. So all we'll do here is character is flow load level, and that's my interior scene. So when I hit the play button, I should start down here in the grass. And if I enter the house and then exit the house, I should be standing at the doorway. Let's give it a try. Actually, so now that we're not starting in the scene as we were previously, but spawning into the scene via the spawn ply block, we need to assign our actor. So I'll go to ply game, actors, and I will drop my player prefab in the player manager into the default player prefab. In a future episode, we'll be able to choose between warrior, rogue, or mage, and then we will be able to and then we will need to do further work in the different characters we have to select. But for right now, this is our only player, so I'll select him as default. Now if I hit play, we should be standing in the grass. And then once we enter and exit the house, the global destination string should put us here next to the doorway. Let's give it a try. Now we've entered our interior scene. I'll use the doorway again. And sure enough, we entered our town scene, but we were spawned at the correct location. 
That's all for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and if you learned something, hit that like button. Join me next time, and we'll be going over color highlighting for enemies and weapons.